Welcome to Storytime. Today we're going to look at Theophany, the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River. Not too long before Jesus was born, the Bible says that his mother made a trip to see her cousin Elizabeth. She was also expecting a baby, and the two ladies lived together for three months while their babies grew in their tummies. Elizabeth's son came to be known as John the Baptist, and he grew up to give his life entirely to God. When he was a young man, he went off on his own into the wilderness, into the desert around the Jordan River. John wore rough camel skin around him as clothes and ate locusts and honeycombs that he found in the wild. When John was around 30 years old, and after reading the Bible day and night, a great change came upon him. He began to preach to all the people who came out to the river. I have heard the word of God, he would shout. You must think about your sins and be truly sorry for them. Change your ways, he said, because God's kingdom is here. People began to travel to the Jordan just to hear what John had to say. Some even became his followers. All kinds of men and women came, the poor, the rich, priests, tax collectors, and even Roman soldiers came. No matter who they were, John's message was the same. He said people should turn back to God, be kind, Avoid hurting anybody with harsh words or violence. Every day, people would line up by the River Jordan, eager to be forgiven for their sins and wanting to make a new start in life. One by one, John would take them into the river, immerse them quickly into the water, and bless them as they rose up from the water. The Greek word baptize means to immerse in water. And so John came to be called the Baptist. The Jews at that time believed that by washing the outside of the body, that they washed their souls from sin also. As the weeks passed, rumors began to spread among the people in the area. Maybe this holy man John is the savior spoken of by the prophets in our Bible, the people would say. Surely this man is the Christ, others exclaimed. But John was always very clear about the truth. I am not the Savior or the Messiah that you've been expecting. I am just one voice crying out in the wilderness, trying to prepare the way for the Lord when he comes, he said. I'm baptizing you with water, but someone is coming soon who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. He is much greater than I, so great that I'm not even fit for the job of cleaning his sandals. When Jesus himself arrived among the crowds at the banks of the Jordan, John knew who he was immediately, and he told everyone who was there, Here he comes, he cried, falling on his knees. The one God has promised us is here the one who will take away all the sins of the world. Jesus laid his hand gently on his cousin's arm, and he looked deep into his eyes. Will you baptize me too, John? He asked. My Lord, John gasped. I can't baptize you. It should be you who baptizes me. However, Jesus insisted. Each of us should do what God has given us to do, he said quietly. And so John led Jesus down into the Jordan at the very moment that John immersed Jesus. And as he rose from the waters, the two of them heard a mighty thunderclap from the sky. John looked up to see the clouds of the heavens parting and a dove came gliding down, bathed in heavenly light. John knew that the Holy Spirit was descending on Jesus because he was not just a regular person. He was God. 
So when Jesus went into the water of the Jordan, it wasn't the water of the Jordan that blessed him. He had blessed all of the rivers and the oceans in the world. Then they heard a voice that seemed to come from everywhere and nowhere all at once. This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. It was God the Father in heaven telling everyone how pleased he was with his Son Jesus. Those who saw and heard what happened that day knew that God the Father had spoken. God the Son was there in person as Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit had descended like a dove. When God shows himself like that, it's called a theophany. And it reminds us that all three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are the one God that we believe in. And so whenever we make the sign of the cross and say the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we remember that day that Jesus was baptized and how God had spoken and sent his Holy Spirit. The end.